Fear is debilitating. How can we turn fear into courage? How can we use compassion as the antidote to fear? I want to take you on a journey where compassion is brought to life, where compassion is demonstrated and offered without words or wanting anything back in return. I want to share with you how compassion challenges fear and encourages courage. The 7th of October, 1974, a baby boy was born who was so ill he needs to be kept in isolation for the first six weeks of his life. Can you imagine what this could do to a baby and could feel like? No human touch, no connection. His mother had been exposed to and suffered unimaginable atrocities during the Second World War as a child in Poland and even more so in Russia. Remarkably, that baby would grow into a man who would deeply cherish compassion. He led others on military deployments around the world, including Afghanistan, and led others on expeditions around the world. Some of those expeditions included 61 successful summits to the highest freestanding mountain in the world, Kilimanjaro. That man, you may have guessed, is me. Compassion is an essential part of being human. The world needs compassion like never before, and it starts with self-compassion. Maybe now is a good moment to ask yourself how compassion has an impact on you and others. I've learned that compassion creates greater resilience, can lower distress, raise levels of flourishing, and meaning in life. Compassion has a far wider reach once ignited than we could possibly ever dare hope for. Let me take you to Africa. 3 a.m. in the dark, minus 15 degrees Celsius, not including wind chill factor. Water had frozen, energy was dwindling in general. I was leading a group to the summit of Kilimanjaro. Deep effects of altitude were being felt, hands and feet in pain from the cold. We still had six hours to go before we reached the summit. At one quick rest stop, I noticed Jenny was starting to suffer from the cold, and when she turned to me, I could see fear in her eyes. No matter what the environment or situation, the look of fear is always the same. I went up to Jenny and I gave her a smile. I took a layer of mine off, gave it to her, which eventually worked. It was cold. I then gave Jenny the intensity of a 20-second hug as I wanted to take her suffering away and replace it with hope and courage. Without hope, we have nothing. After rubbing Jenny's arms, back, and hands, I gave her another 20-second hug, which I hoped would help supercharge her. That hug was compassion made tangible. Think about this for a moment. You can feel yours and the other person's body tense up, ease, tense up, ease, completely relax, then recalibrate. It's a strange thing, but you can feel the other person's body power up during that recalibration moment. And what happened to Jenny on that mountain? Color and composure had returned to her face and body. She gave me a small smile back. Not one word had been said. Jenny summited Kilimanjaro six hours later and descended safely. Compassion overcame fear on that mountain. The intensity of the 20-second hug reinvigorated connection, hope, belief, determination, and empowerment. Think about the last time you had a 20-second hug, if ever, and the effect it had on you and that other person. I am curious to know if two people's hearts synchronize when they hug. 
I feel a hug provides comfort, calm, and reinforces love. I wonder if it's the same during recalibration, from fear to courage, during acts of compassion. From Africa, let's travel to Afghanistan. It's 2007. One of my roles whilst there was to train specialist elements of the Afghan National Army, and I distinctly remember meeting the group of soldiers who I needed to train, because the looks I received were a mix of emptiness, hate, suffering, and distrust. These guys knew suffering on a deep level. To do the job that had to be done, I needed to build relationships built on trust. I was a guest in their country, and I felt honored and proud to be there. But making them feel valued was key. Abdul and I enjoyed our conversations. We were very different, but also the same. The training came to an end, my role changed, and we went our separate ways. I gave him a hug goodbye. I felt power, strength, determination, courage, hope, and belief in him, which was completely different to when we first met. That final hug was also compassion made tangible. A hug can dissolve barriers. Compassion made tangible has the capacity to build courage, hope, and belief. I met Abdul by chance many weeks later. He looked different. He looked empty. I could see he'd been badly injured. Abdul and his men had closed with the enemy, and it hadn't ended well for them. In his words, he was lucky to have survived. Despite the situation, Abdul had held on to courage, hope, and belief that he would survive another day. Hope and belief are essential for developing self-compassion. Being valued by another strengthens that self-compassion. This is what I've realized through experiences. Compassion is infectious. Compassion overcomes fear. Compassion incites courage and inflames hope. Leading others on mountains in the military allows me to understand that fear is real, and real to many, but doesn't have to be debilitating or destructive. Compassion can be offered without words or wanting anything back in return and turns fear into courage. It only takes one significant person to perform an act of compassion to make a difference. I may not have had any human touch for the first six weeks of my life, but I suspect I was loved and held so much after to make up for it. Compassion is sometimes difficult, and I fail. But the key is to always want to improve and to be a better person on a daily basis. I'm not naive enough to think a hug, no matter what the intensity, can heal the world. But how many times do we walk past, not take action, and even maybe regret it afterwards? How many times do we walk past that piece of rubbish, that injured life, that desperate, lonely person? But I know this. It is time we grab those opportunities. It is time to take action. And it is time to make compassion tangible. <laughs>